So next up, we're going to talk about the memory system, how to store and recall memories, and also how to use the special memory modes that Carbonite has. So when I've created an element that I want to be able to recall at a later point, so in this case, I've got my two box sitting over top of a background. You'll want to use the memory system. On top of the, right next to the menu, on top of the, the system, you'll find your store and your recall buttons. When I click store, the menu will follow to the memory system. I can select from bank 0 to bank 9, and then I can press a button to store it to a register. So there's 99 memories. There's actually 100 because there's double zero. But you have 100 memories in each show file that you can store these snapshots to and recall at a, at a later point. So in this case, we're going to store this to memory 1. But before I press it to store the memory, I can apply attributes. Now, my GUI has followed along, or I can do it directly in the menu system as well, right on the panel. But it's very easy to see in my GUI over here. There are different modes in which you can store the memory. There is recall mode of program. What a recall mode of program will do is it will record the element exactly as it is and force it straight to programs. When you press the button, you'll see it directly on the program screen. You can also set up a mode called Memory AI. Memory AI is going to record all of my elements that were actively on air, but instead of recalling them to air, it will look through the system resources and figure out a way to stick them into preview for you so that you can approve of them, maybe make changes that you need to make prior to taking it to air. So this is a very safe way of being able to recall effects, make sure they're okay before you take it to air. Your other mode of recall is effects dissolve. Now effects dissolve will allow you to interpolate from what's on screen now to your shot. However, if there are resources in use, it will have to cut those off, change them, and then dissolve them back on. Like a key you're being used for a chroma key needs to now be a DVE key. It'll cut the chroma key off, it would then dissolve on the DVE box. You can have whether or not to flag for the role GPO and role VTR. So this is for when I'm using things like video servers and I want to auto trigger them. When I recall the memory, it's whether or not it will also auto trigger the events. If I have robotic cameras configured and I'm controlling those, I can even select whether or not it's supposed to recall the cameras that were actively part of my system as well to the last recall I had performed. You can include aux buses, so maybe I want this recall to make sure that it switches aux 2, which is feeding my onset monitor. So I'll select this, that way it'll always make sure that it feeds the right source to that onset monitor when I recall my effect. As well as your media store channels. So these are the still store channels, and if they're lit up, they will recall these still store channels with whatever was in them when we stored the memory. Finally, every single one of your elements of your MLE will be able to be recalled. So, do I change my transition area? Do I change the program bus? Do I change the next trans buttons? Do I change the preset bus? Do I affect the pattern generator? And, upon recall, do we hit the auto trans automatically for the operator? Then each keyer has its own independent elements. One, do we recall the source of the bus? Do we recall whether or not it was on air or off air? Do we recall the type of key that it was? And do we even recall the mask settings for the keyer? So all four keyers have their own dedicated elements that you can store. So by selecting these elements, every single memory can behave differently than another memory, making it very easy to have your shots recall exactly the elements you want it to recall and not the elements that you don't want it to affect. So here we've got it set up in the way that we normally would and we're going to say that we want it to recall to program exactly how it looks now. So now we're going to store that to memory 1. So we hit store, 1, and it's now stored to one. It will automatically jump into recall mode so that you can change your memory. 
If you select a memory that has nothing stored to it, the switcher will do nothing. So that way it doesn't affect your on-air look. But if we change everything, right, and now we hit recall, and we go to memory one, and we recall memory one, now we will get it how we stored it. However, the recall side can override the store side. So what you'll notice here is that there was a store tab and there's a recall tab. Recall tab also has its same attributes. However, you're able to override things. By default, you can say, do whatever the memory says, which would be to light the element up in a blue state. Or you can force overrides, where I can say, no, I want the media stores to always recall. So they're lit up in this kind of magenta color. If instead I select them to blue, now they'll make sure to only do what the memory says. And since I set the recall mode to memory mode, now when we recall that memory, however the memory was stored is how it recalls. By default, what you're going to want to do is have everything set to blue on the recall side. Where this comes in handy is if something changes, like I need to use key four to put in a, a bug. We have this YouTube bug I must put up that we didn't account for in our setup build. It's nice to become, be able to come in and say, don't recall and change this keyer ever. And now that keyer will always be left alone. All of my other memory recalls will be affected but this keyer will never change no matter what the memory was stored. So it saves me the hassle of having to go through every single one of my memories, modify them, and restore them again. This allows for a global override. You can also press the memory again, the one that's lit up. I haven't done any other memory changes, and by selecting this, it will undo. So when I recalled it, it called up my two box. By selecting that exact button again, it undoes and goes right back to what I had before the memory recall. However, if I recall a memory and then I change it, so here I cut to a source, you'll see that the light goes away because I can no longer undo. I would be recalling back to my two box, but while it's lit up, I still have the ability to undo. It's very easy to get back to something if you made a mistake and did a recall by accident. So we're just quickly going to show how memory AI works because memory AI is very important with a 1ME switcher. So if we go back to having my two box on air over top of this white background and when I stored the memory, if instead of recalling the program, I said I want this to always recall to memory AI. So now what's going to happen is we're going to store it to override these parameters, so it restored. So now, if we don't have these keys on air, and I'm cutting through a source, maybe I've got my graphic up for my, my talent, and I want to now recall my two box, but I, maybe I want to change what's in the boxes, maybe I want to make sure that they're okay. By having stored with memory AI, the way the system will work is on recalling, it will put it into my preview window. And what it did for me was it reconfigured the transition area so it'll take whatever's on air, off air, and replace it with what I stored actively on air in my memory. So now the switcher is thinking for me and figuring out resources so that I can see it. Yep, that's exactly what I want. And now I can quickly transition to that. What's nice is here it used the exact keyers that we had stored in the memory. Now, if instead of key four, I had been using key one to do that auto select key, to put up that linear key, now when we recall memory one, it still recreates it for me in preview. It's just it's now reordered the keyers. It recognized that I wanted the two boxes, and since key one was in use, it actually rippled the keyers down, and now it's using key two and key three. 
And again, it's going to set it up so that it'll take whatever's on air off and put whatever we've got in preview on air. And if I needed to change something like one of my box sources, it makes it very simple for me to say, yep, key three, instead I want the studio and go ahead and let's do a wipe to it instead. So that's how you can use the memory system to set up your shots, build your effects, and then easily and consistently recall them and take them to air.